Welcome to day four of my 30 day security challenge, the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your privacy and security online. You can follow along with the whole thing over at my blog at snubsy.com where you can skip ahead or download a checklist of the challenge and each video is also going to be curated into a playlist so it will be really easy to follow along from day one all the way through 30 here on YouTube. Now today we are going to figure out who is on our network, how to kick off any weird devices, and what devices should go on your guest network versus internal network. Now log in to your admin interface for your router via the web browser again. So to get there, type in the IP address, which will be something like 192.168.1.1 or similar. That's what I use to log into mine. Yesterday we talked about how to change all of your settings on your router so you are more secure. Chances are everything on your network now are things that should be on your network if you did change your SSID and passcode, plus your admin credentials yesterday. But on the off chance that something snuck on that should not be there, let's go ahead and check out the clients list. Now clients are any devices connected to your network, be it a smartphone, an IoT device, a computer, a gaming console, whatever it might be. You should be able to recognize everything on that list, but if there is still something weird there, you'll need to go back and change your settings again, following my advice yesterday. That includes turning on WPA2, turning off WPS, and restricting access to your internal network to just your devices, not Internet of Things devices or friends that come over. Hopefully you did not skip yesterday, because if you did, this ain't gonna make a lot of sense, okay? So now check your client list again. If you see anything weird, consider that some products may just be a model number instead of an easily understood name. If you suspect that weirdly named device is something that you actually own, you can simply shut down that device that you think it is, refresh the client list, and see if it disappeared. If you did, then you know you found your culprit. So that's pretty easy. Now let's choose which network all of our items should go on. Hopefully you followed my advice and separated out your IoT devices from your smartphone and your laptop by creating that guest network, but let's go ahead and dig deeper. So IoT stands for Internet of Things. It includes connected appliances, connected cars, wearable technology, etc., etc. Popular devices in the IoT category include the Nest thermostat, internet connected security cameras, connected Roomba robots, connected pet feeders, Amazon's Echo, Google's Home, your car if it connects to the internet, a Fitbit, even a Kindle e-reader would be considered IoT. Now the problem with IoT devices is that oftentimes they are built with convenience in mind instead of security. So in a real world sense, you could equate this to leaving your front door open. It would be really convenient to just leave your front door open, but you would take the time to shut it and lock it because you want that security. We accept that additional labor because because the security of our household beats the convenience of just being lazy and leaving it open. IoT devices favor convenience by making our lives easier in one way or another. But oftentimes, they throw security out the window just so that's easier to use. That inevitably hurts us when someone finds a backdoor or vulnerability in that device and then they wreak havoc on our entire home network. Since these IoT devices aren't currently regulated for any authority for security, manufacturers can basically just do whatever they want. Luckily, some care more about your security than others, but we also end up paying extra for those additional layers of security. So a lot of folks just don't buy the more protected devices because they cost more. Scary thing is, as consumers, a lot of times you won't even know if an IoT device has been hacked because it might continue to work like normal without any knowledge that something has happened. So take out that notepad or look through your client list on your router and figure out what products are IoT and which ones are not. If you question whether or not something is IoT, just do yourself a favor and just list it as an Internet of Things device, just in case the security of that device just totally sucks. Now while you probably can't kick any of these items off your router via the client list, you may be able to do that. It would definitely be worth it if you can check your settings and do so. You could also reset each item and stick them on your newly created guest network so that they can't hurt anything inside your internal network if they ever do get hacked. This is going to take some time to do unless you can just open up the device's smartphone app and do it via the app's interface. 
So take your time, be diligent, trust me when I say it is worth it, and this is a huge way to protect your computer and smartphone from attacks on Internet of Things devices. Now for a pro tip. Now that you know which devices are IoT and which ones are not, consider logging into those IoT devices if you can and changing the default username and password credentials for that device. Again, if you can, I know not a lot of them allow you to be able to do that. You may want to write these down in your notepad because you do want to come up with different passwords and usernames for each device. We will talk about how to store all these new passwords later on this month. Even better yet, just disconnect the device. Does your Roomba vacuum really need to be connected to the internet? Do you really need to connect your refrigerator to the Wi-Fi? No? Then turn it off, seriously. Nobody can attack the device via the network if it's not on the network in the first place. Make sure that you update the firmware on any devices that are connected and if you have the ability to do so. And if you have an option to, turn off things called universal plug and play. UPnP for short is used to help devices auto-connect, but it's also a vulnerability in some devices. So if the option is there, just turn it off. If it doesn't break anything, cool. If it does, reset it and turn it back on. If the device has a cloud backup option, make sure their privacy policy says they use encryption. Even then, you can't be sure. You just be taking their word for it. So if you can live without cloud backups on your device, just turn it off. And lastly, if you wear or bring any devices with you to work, don't connect them to your work's internal network. Ask if your job has a guest network that you can connect to instead, but make sure that they constantly assess and audit the devices on the network to keep you safe and your devices as well. Keep that in mind for your home network too. Continually audit your router settings and client list just to make sure that they are still secure, that they're updated, and that they are private. Security is constantly changing, so it is really important that you stay up to date on any new firmware updates or devices on your network. All right, day four is done. Whew, those were two very long days, but tomorrow is pretty easy. Tomorrow I'm gonna show how to set up auto updating, lock screens, and more for your important smartphones and computers. But first, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist, and skip ahead on that 30 day security challenge if you feel like you want to. Again, I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you tomorrow for day five.